Welcome back. Time for some more business. We are going to focus on the financial sector. The receiver for liquidated savings and loans companies has again extended time for depositors to submit all documents regarding how much they are being owed. George Raffi has more on a notice issued by the receiver, Eric Nananipa. Mr. Nipa in the public notice disclosed that depositors of these liquidated savings and loans companies have up until next Friday, October 18, to submit the necessary proof that these institutions that have been closed down are indeed indebted to them. According to the receiver, up to next Friday, it can conclude that there are no outstanding claims. It appears the receiver, since it took over these institutions, has struggled to get these depositors to submit the necessary documents to support their claims. In a related development, the receiver is threatening to take legal action against persons and institutions that are indebted to these collapsed savings loans companies, as well as finance houses. The receiver argues that it's being forced to go this way because some of these firms just don't want to pay these debts. The Bank of Ghana on 16th of August 2019 revoked the licenses of 23 insolvent savings and loans companies. It then appointed Eric Nananipa to manage the process. Already we understand that the receiver has started paying a fraction of the depositors' claim. The plan is that they will settle part of it, the rest paid later. So banks are in the business of accepting deposits and lending mainly from these deposits. This may sound very simple, but as soon as there are some restrictions placed on this model, there may be some implications. On this edition of Joy Business, Breaking It Down with Philip Namfori, he takes a look at a story from our neighbors in Nigeria and examines the implications for Ghana. Hello and welcome to another edition of Joy Business, breaking it down with me, Philip Nanfuri. Now, today I want to share with you a story I read on Bloomberg.com. And this story says, the Central Bank of Nigeria directed all its commercial banks to keep a loan to deposit ratio of 65% up from 60%. Now, I kept thinking and asking myself, what exactly is a loan to deposit ratio and what are the implications for us here in Ghana and for even the banks in Nigeria? Now, banks essentially mobilize deposits from the public, you and I, and use these deposits to channel out loans. Right, so if a bank is supposed to maintain a loan deposit ratio of 65%, what it means is that for every 100 CDs that comes out, that comes into the bank as a deposit, the bank has to give out 65 CDs as a loan, which means that they have only 35 CDs left in the bank to honor obligations of customers like you and I. So if the Central Bank of Nigeria believes that the Nigerian economy is slowing and directs banks to do this, then it wants to increase the loans in the system for businesses and individuals to borrow and spare growth in the economy. Now, there are some implications here. And the first one, obviously, is that this will increase lending in the economy for businesses to grow and will boost the Nigerian economy. If we came down to Ghana, as we've been experiencing for some time now, our, our banks are being accused of not lending to businesses. So if the Bank of Ghana told banks to increase their loan to deposit ratio, then it means that from the deposits that they receive from the public, they'll have to increase their lending to you and I. And this will have positive effects for the Ghanaian economy. However, there are some negative effects. And let me share some with you. When you tell a bank to lend at a certain ratio or beyond a certain minimum, you are directing the bank to lend to areas all over the economy. And sometimes, in the operation of banking, it's essentially risk management. Banks accept your deposits and hope that you will come for them one day or sometime. So imagine a bank gives out your money to businesses, individuals, and these individuals don't pay back on time or even pay back at all. Then we have a case of the non-performing loans or non-performing assets broadly. So if a bank is told to lend at a certain minimum, it's a good thing all things being equal, but we must weigh the risks within the economy. It's like telling you to give money to your brother, your sister, your mother, your father, even if you don't want to give them money. I'm not sure you'll be happy with that. I won't. So imagine what the banks are doing. And banks are in business to maximize value for their shareholders. They make profit all right, but the overall aim is to maximize shareholder value, the people who started the bank. So banks try to minimize their non-performing loans when they're giving out loans. So if you force them and force an inverted commerce to give out loans they don't want to, 
these loans might develop into non-performing loans. And it will surprise you to know that the Central Bank of Nigeria, in the same Bloomberg story, a development of the story, fined the banks for failing to do so. Now, today I engaged Charles Mensa, he's a financial analyst, and Charles says, we should be wary of such things because we are forcing banks to go into areas where they might not want to go just in order that they want to lend. And it has good effects, yes. More money for you and I to grow our businesses, to grow our pockets. But however, we need to be wary of the issue of non-performing loans. And that is the key problem. And that's what Charles sought to highlight. Charles Mensah, a financial analyst, sought to highlight. So loan to deposit ratio, I've explained it. For every 100 CDs in deposit, 65 must go out as loans, using the ratio that the Central Bank of Nigeria to the Nigerian banks to hold. Bringing it down to Ghana, we've tried it before in the 1970s, and it didn't work too well. That era was called the financial repression era, or the financially repressive era, forcing banks to do what they're not supposed to do. People believe we should allow banks to channel money where they feel it will be most needed. Sometimes we complain, yes, there's not enough money from the banks, but they're in business to make profit, and they must be worry because they do this lending from your deposits. So imagine you went to the bank and you couldn't get it. I'm sure you'd be very peeved. So that is it for this edition of Joy Business, breaking it down with me, Philip Nanfuri. I hope you have a good one. That's it for business tonight. My name is Daryl Kwao. Sports is up next.